Hi, my name is Mike Corvath, Associate Attorney at Gross McGinley. And I'm Jacob Oldacre, an Associate Attorney at Gross McGinley. And we're here to talk to you about NIL and the year in review. Uh, but Mike, let's hear a little bit about your sports background. Of course. So I grew up playing baseball right here in the Lehigh Valley. I attended one year at Northampton Community College playing baseball and was then the uh, president of the club baseball team at Bloomsburg University for several years. I ended up going to Villanova University for law school where I was the editor-in-chief of the Jeffrey S. Moore at Sports Law Journal. And sports and the law are my passion and I'm excited to be here. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, a little bit about me. I uh, grew up playing soccer. It was always my passion. Uh, played at Lock Haven University, uh, D2 school in the middle of the state, up by Penn State. Um, and, you know, I still play today. And sports has always been something I'm passionate about. It's what drove my desire to go to law school and, you know, combine my love for sports and, and my love for law. Um, and I think that's kind of what we're doing with our practice group right now. Absolutely, Jake. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I'm completely excited to be uh, in the sports law practice group at Gross McGinley. And I think we have a wonderful opportunity. There's a lot of things that we could talk about today and just about every day in sports and the law. But today, I think let's let's focus on NIL and see what we can uh, we can tell people today. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So like I said, it's kind of a year in review. July of uh, 2021, the Supreme Court um, and the NCAA put out a, you know, an interim policy on, on NIL. So Mike, tell us a little bit about NIL and you know what it means for our student athletes now. I mean, this is a monumental decision. Yeah, of course. So this, this all occurred last summer, not even a year ago at this point. I think it was, it was July of 2021 uh, when the Supreme Court took up Austin versus NCAA and the uh, oral arguments were heard in May and then decided in July. And this, this was a case that was in litigation in the federal system for years. I mean, it started in 2014 uh, with uh, O'Bannon versus NCAA. And then several uh, cases about college players being paid were consolidated into one a few years later, which became Alston. Um, ultimately, what, what occurred last year was that the Supreme Court pretty much found that the um, that college players did have a right to make money off themselves and that they did have a right to name, image, and likeness. And it wasn't even close. I mean, the, the NCAA oral arguments were were terrible. They're, they didn't they did not go the way they planned. And I don't even no, think they they, I don't think they had much confidence. And in the end, the Supreme Court, led by uh, Justice Neil Gorsuch, decided the case. They decided the case nine zero. Um, and if you, you go back and have a moment to read some of the opinions, uh, they weren't exactly. Uh, no. Favor favorable of the NCAA, so which was which was quite interesting, in it, but a monumental step for student athletes, no less. Yeah, absolutely, and you know it gives our our student athletes and um, an opportunity in a, a billion dollar industry. Um, I mean, we're not we're not talking a small industry here. I mean, these these student athletes not only are they working hard, not only are they talented, they're making these schools and um, the NCAA. They're making them a lot of money. A lot of money. You know the legislation and these student athletes and. There, there really isn't firm guidance right now. There isn't, you know, mm -hmm. that set precedence of, you know, what do these NIL deals look like? What do these student athletes do? What do the universities do? Um, you know, right now it seems that it's going on a, you know, per state basis, but not even each state's put in, in legislation. So, mm -hmm. you know, from your point of view, like what is the best way for, for these student athletes to kind of navigate these NIL deals without, without any real firm guidance from, from anyone? Right. Well, well, it's it's tough because, like we said, this hasn't even been going on for a year. I mean, we're not even a full year into the, the latest uh, academic season mm -hmm. in in the NCAA. So, so it's tough. That, like you said, I mean, the the states are going to try to do their job and enact some legislation that gives guidance. But right now, what what's really uh, concerning is that the NCAA refuses to provide guidance now. Maybe, and I don't know that they will. Uh, they, they, they may never. That's that's very true. So what, what I would suggest to the student athletes who who are looking, you know, to to get involved and also stay in compliance would be to listen to what their their universities or institutions are telling them. And also the conferences. We've talked about this before, how uh, some of the universities are not letting uh, their logos be used for the student athletes as part of their their NIL deals right. with with outside companies. Um, so that, that's huge. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a potential lawsuit if a university uh, would go after a student for that. And um, so I, I would suggest that reviewing these, um, these regulations and laws that have been placed so far on, by, by conferences and by schools. And the best way to do that is really to, to have an experienced uh, lawyer with you. That, that may be difficult to find an NIL lawyer, but I mean, this is the kind of work that we do. We, 
every day, regulatory compliance, contracts, and right. and th yeah. things of that sort. Absolutely, and and you know your university and your conference, while it's new to them too, they're they're there to help you with compliance. Um, they they want to protect their athletes. Their athletes are one of their you know most valuable assets if you if you want to call them an asset. Um, so you know they're there to help with compliance questions. We're here to help with compliance questions, or you know we're we're here to be that medium between your school or your conference um, and. You know, work through this, um, and it's ever changing. You you talked about the logo. Um, a lot of universities have you know instituted that they don't want their logo used in these NIL deals. And you, from conversations you and I had, we we see that changing. Mm -hmm. um, when that will change? Will it be you know every school does that? It, it's hard to say. Um, so you know there are you know constant things that we have to monitor and, and watch out for, and you know preserve your your eligibility as you. Um, you know, progress in your career and, and move forward. So let's talk about, you know, a little bit about the, the Lehigh Valley and the market and, you know, what, what motivated us beyond our love for sports to really, you know, push for, um, you know, sports law practice group here at Gross McGinley. Right, right. And it, it's something that I think both of us are so passionate about and some, an opportunity that we really saw is this NIL deal. I mean, it's what, what's happening is for everyone. Absolutely. I mean, we, 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 we know about the things, uh, you know, occurrences like a Zion Williamson at Duke who mm -hmm. was could have made so much money if this was in place when he was a student. I mean, yeah. but that's, that's a cream of the crop example towards the top of the NCAA. But this isn't just for the big time Division One athletes. This is this is for everyone. Right. And we're, we're seeing NIL deals for D1, D2, D3 athletes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, there's some JUCO kids that are, are getting these opportunities as well. Yeah. No, ab absolutely. I mean, it's coming out of high school now, you can you can sign with an agent and uh, have, have them for four years throughout your, your time in college to, re, to really navigate. Uh, and most of those students who are doing that are, are the Division I athletes, but we're also seeing that happen in Division II and Division III with you know, signing smaller brand deals with local companies and mm -hmm. with you know, uh, becoming very popular as a social media influencer and gaining revenue from, from that type of thing. Yeah, and let's talk about social media real quick because I mean, it's probably the most powerful tool that these, these kids have and honestly, maybe anyone has right now. Um, and as Mike said, these NIL deals are beyond just, you know, um, let me market for a, a company. Let me go to some talks or, you know, some meet and greets. Um, you know, how, how can these student athletes use social media and like, what is the power of that branding? Oh, it's, it's so powerful, especially in the past decade with the, the way the world just, just turns now is mm -hmm. that, uh, wh whether you are the top division one athlete or you are just someone playing for you know the the local university your ability to to gain followers and gain traction through your personal life and your sports life i mean this is we see this every day where there, there's more and more influencers in the sports world and beyond that mm -hmm. that are looking uh for for deals and right i mean with that comes navigation through the legal field yeah and you know with that social media and nil there's there's going to be you know compliance issues and um, you know, they're not all foreseen yet and there's probably not enough guidance yet. Um, but you know, that's what we're here to help with. And, you know, that's what we want to work through. Um, again, you know, the athletes are in the driver's seat and we want to protect your eligibility. I mean, that's, what's most important. Um, you know, one more, one more thought that I just had is, you know, the recent, um, decision by Adidas with NIL, oh, right, which is, right. you know, absolutely monumental. Um, you know, right now it's only open to D1 athletes um, that Adidas sponsored schools, which I think was somewhere around 50,000 athletes. Mm -hmm. um, but where do you see that going? Um, you know, they're kind of setting the, the forefront, the foreground, like they're the first ones to do this. Right. Where's that going to go? Well, I think it's just a starting point. Like, like we've said multiple times throughout this, we've, we're not even a year in mm -hmm. and we already have one of the biggest brands in the world announcing this deal for... 50,000 athletes. I think it was over, just over a hundred schools. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's only for division one so far. Right. And that, that's, what's really crazy is that right now we have, we already have this rolled out for the division one schools, but it's not going to be too long before the division twos, the division threes, the, the JUCO schools, they're all involved. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that just comes back to our point. I mean, this is going to affect every college athlete. And, you know, we want to be involved in that. And, you know, you made a good point of, um, you know, out of high school, these, these kids can hire at, or I'm sorry, hire agents. Um, and then, you know, work with that agent for all four years. And, you know, that's something we're really passionate about, um, specifically to the Lehigh Valley, you know, and beyond is, you know, 
building that relationship with our local athletes, our local sports organizations, even our local um, colleges and universities. You know, Absolutely. they're going to have compliance questions and um, compliance related issues with NIL. Um, so, you know, that's that's something that I know we're both passionate about, you know, getting to meet these kids, getting to meet these universities and, you know, really exposing ourselves to the, to the sports market. Absolutely. We we are. I, I know I couldn't be more excited to work with the Greater Lehigh Valley area with the athletic departments, athletic institutions and the athletes within. and. I mean, th this is a great thing for everybody. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, it really is. Um, so, Mike, I mean, unless you have any, any final words. Nope. I, I, I would just say that we are, we're here to help and we're, we can, we're excited. We're, we're excited to navigate this field together. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, our passion for sports, our passion for law, and I think Mike and I talk about a, a new sports topic every day uh, through text or, or in the office. So, you know, it's always on our mind. Um, so, you know, as, as compliance questions come up, as NIL questions come up, um, you know, beyond NIL, there's a lot of sports stuff. Like you said, we could talk about this every day. Um, you know, if you're an athlete, if you're a sports organization, a sports team, a sports coach, uh, anyone in the world of sports, you know, reach out to us. We're, we're here to help. We're excited to talk to you. We're excited to help you. Um, and we're excited to get to know you. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure, Mike. Thanks. Thanks, Jake.